Hi everyone, today we're going to be talking about data shifting instructions in the Omron CP1H PLC. And there are several instructions, so we're going to split this up into a couple of different parts on our video here. So we'll discuss um, about 12 of the shifting instructions, and in the next part we'll discuss another 12. So let's, uh, first of all, we'll go up to my screen here, and you can see that I have my program running here. And in the Omron, it allows you to do a lot of data shifting instructions. And basically, um, PLC program programming itself is all about manipulating the information within the PLC. You know, we, in this series, we've already talked about timers and counters and moves and comparison instructions. And data shifting is just a little different concept that will allow bits to move or words to move around in memory that represents things like product, it could represent uh, locations, things like that. And usually when we talk about it, we talk about uh, conveyor belt movement. And if you think of a conveyor belt, and if we sense product on that, that turns a bit on, and then as that bit moves along the conveyor belt, we can track it within the actual memory word. So up on my screen here, what you'll see is we have um, our first instruction, which is actually called the shift register. And the shift register um, basically has a starting word and an ending word, and it will actually shift bits right along here from the start word to the end word. In our particular case, what we're using is H0, and our ending word is H0, so we're only dealing with the first 16 bits, which we can see right down here. There's my 16 bits. And what I have here is my clock pulse flag, which is set for one second. So when I put a value um, or put an input into this, which is coming from this input word here, and we'll set that on. Um, change it to monitor. And once that is on, what you can see is now every time the clock bit flag pulses, it actually is sending a bit into that shift register. If I turn it off, then it actually turns it off. And you'll see that when we get to the 10, it actually turns that bit or that physical output here off of H010 and turns that output on. And at any time during, um, uh, during uh, the program itself, what we can do is we can activate those bits um, here or here. This is our actual input that starts at zero at bit zero but we can actually turn on, say, HR3, and that way that bit here will actually then turn on. So different, 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 couple of different ways of doing it. Our next instruction that we'll look at is the reversible shift register. And the reversible shift register, what it will do is allow you to do the same thing, except that now we can go backwards and forwards. And the uh, shift register actually works on a control word. And my control word will tell my direction, my data input, my shift input, and my reset. And a reset basically just clears the register itself so that you don't see anything at all. So up here on my screen, my control register is my uh, input 20 or my register 20. And I have my starting word as H1 and my ending word is H1. So again, we're only dealing with 16 bits. My direction is coming from uh, 2102. And then I have my data input, 2103. And then I have my shifting, which is uh, 20.14. I have my reset. Um, so uh, my reset right here is 21.04. And it will reset, making it zero. And my H108, so the eighth bit over, well, when that turns on, will actually turn on the output. So if we look at, here's my H channel here. The bit that we're looking at is this one right here. So when that turns on, the output turns on. So what we'll do is we will actually, um, right now you can see that everything's powered up here. My direction's there. And what we'll do is we will just, um, put some data on the input so we'll turn that on there we go and what you can see is my direction 
right now is reversed. So again, that bit turned on and then my output turned on. I can then make it send the other way. We'll just turn that, that input off. Okay, you still see it's shifting everything to the right here. And we'll turn on our direction. And now we're going to shift everything to the left. Our next instruction is our asynchronous shift register. And once again, with our asynchronous shift register, we actually have control word. And our control word actually enables a shift. It clears the shift. And it shifts non-zero and then our shift direction. It either shifts it towards the first uh, starting word or the ending word. So if it's on, it's shifting towards the starting word. If it's off, it's shifting toward the ending word. And asynchronous basically will mean that if we have a zero, now this works on words at a time. So if we have a zero, it replaces a zero with another value. And it will actually then condense everything down so that if we have, um, say, a conveyor belt that we don't actually sync the conveyor belt, we need to know what products are on there, it'll shove everything down to the end. And that's what this will do. So looking at the instruction, what we do is we have an asynchronous shift register. It's from gen, uh, word zero as a starting. Our ending is word nine. And we have our shift direction or enable, disable. So what will happen is if I turn or put a value into data memory zero, we'll put in uh, we'll put an F. Okay? And then what we'll do is we can enable the shift bit. And what you'll see is that that F disappeared, but what it did was it disappeared down to the ending, which is right here, data memory nine. So everything I put into here then moves down to the bottom of that list. So let's try, uh, we'll try putting in one, two, three, four. And as soon as I put that in, right, it moves down to the bottom of the list. If we do, um, or reverse, so I'll turn this one on as well. What we should see is a one, two, three, four, and an FFF. Now we'll return to data memory zero and data memory one. So turn that on. And sure enough, you see the one comes up, then the other comes up with the, with the uh, enable bit. So it takes a, every time it scans, what we're doing is moving it up within that, that register. So asynchronous shift register. The next one is a word shift. And my word shift basically takes my source data word, which is located here, and it moves in the start. And that with each um, reiteration or each in, uh, execution of the instruction, it shifts it one word down to the end. The end word then is lost at the, the end of the shift register. So in our case here, we have uh, data memory 10 to which is our source word. And currently right now it's zero and we're going from 11 to 19. So let's, uh, let's put the value of, of um, we'll say uh, four, three, two, one. And we'll set that. So here's our source word. Now what will happen is when I enable this word shift, it's actually going to take this and now start putting it into uh, 11, 12, and keeps going. Turn that on. And there we go. It keeps on putting it right down. Now if I turn the source word back to zero, it's shifting that in. If I stop it, that stops my shifting. So again, here's my uh, words that are still left over. All right, so that was word shift. You'll see that each uh, variation we have slight, slightly different. So what you, our next instruction is going to be our 
arithmetic shift left and what it's going to do is basically move zero in there and just keep on um, moving those bits within that register that I specify. In our case here it's going to be uh, H2 which is located right here. So let's turn that on so we're enabling it now and what we'll do is we'll set a value of 1 in here and as you see as we move it to the left we keep on going. You also notice that what we're doing is actually multiplying that result by two each time. So if you, it's an easy way of thinking of it, if arithmet, um, arithmetic shift left is actually multiplying by two. And if I do that again, we'll, we'll uh, set the value to number one there. So you go start one, four, eight, ten, 20, 40, 80, etc. Next instruction we have is a double shift left. So basically instead of the one register, we're using two. In our case here, we specify H3, which specifies H3 and four. So we'll energize it, turn it on. And what we'll do is we'll set um, a bit in um, the register. In fact, if we want to, we can actually set a couple of bits. So I'm going to set three, which is the first two. And you see then the two bits are then shifted throughout the register. And when it gets to the end, it should actually shift to the next register, which is H4, which is our second part of it. You can actually see it uh, here. And what we're actually doing is, again, as we shift to the left, we multiply by two. This is in hex, so that's what you'll see the hex values, or equivalent to the hex values. And sure enough, that's exactly what it does until it shifts off the end where we lose the data. So the next uh, instruction, we're gonna sh arithmetic shift right. So we'll energize it. The enable so our pulse here is going and you notice here that we're using the add sign or the differentiate up sign on arithmetic shift uh, right and then we have a um, there's our double and so our right is basically going to put values in bit 15 and we're going to shift to the right hand side which is actually uh, dividing by two each time so let's try that out it's on h5 so we'll put the a value of um, 800 or 8,000 hex. There we go. And see, as that bit shifts right, we're actually um, dividing by two each time. Next one we have is a double uh, shift right. And our double shift right. Basically, we'll do the same thing, except for now that we're um, using two registers. Set that on, so our pulse flag is here, and we're using this on six and seven. So what we'll do is on seven, we will actually change the value here, and we'll put the 8,000, and then we can see, actually see every one second pulse, it's actually shifting that bit. When this bit at the end, or bit zero of the, the word plus one turns on, then the highest bit of our first word then turns on here, which is exactly what happens. And it shifts back through. Okay, that's it for now. Um, we'll continue this with this on part two. And if you like this video, and you'd like to see more, there are three ways in which you can help us out. You can give us a thumbs up so other people can find this information. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel at the end of the video. You can also go to accautomation.ca and subscribe to our website. When you do, you'll get notification every time we publish new content to the site, and you also get two free eBooks on numbering systems and robust data logging. And the third thing to do to help us out is tell a friend or colleague. Thanks very much for watching.